Hello everybody and welcome back to the Bayonetta 2 walkthrough. It's time for Chapter 7, The Ark. But first we are going to have a quick trip to the Gates of Hell. Diplomacy has failed. Thank God Wonderful 101 reference! Ah! I, say, I love it when that game gets referenced because it's just... It's wonderful. It's, it's one of my favourite games that Hideki Kamiya has made. And it's one of my favourite games of all time, even if it it's flawed, don't get me wrong. And I think there are certain things that they really should have fixed. But having said that, it's just wonderful. And I mean you can hear me kind of gush over it in my walkthrough of the game. But it's severely underrated and people should definitely play it. Even if just to just to experience it, because there's nothing like it out there at all. And ah, oh, love the wonderful 101. <laughs> now, funny story about this chapter. Just before, well, I, I was basically starting doing the commentary for it, and. Uh, Realised I hadn't edited out a fail, which was slightly depressing, because <laughs> I had a slightly naff run of the first fight. And I believe that the reason that I was so determined to get a good run on the first fight is because I know what's coming at the end and I know that I'm not very good at it. So, <laughs> kind of needed all the points I can get because there's n even though there's more verses in this than you would get in a kind of boss level, there really aren't that many in the grand scheme of things, which is slightly depressing. I feel like I've seen this place before. Last, you stand before me without escape. This is not your world, and you should not be in it. What was once won must be won once again. You must be turned to nothing. Little one, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine, love. Now I'm sure I've seen this room before. If you're still trying to go to hell, Bayonetta, I might know the shortcut. Oh? I'm remembering what I really am. Time's almost up. Bayonetta. You better start creating miracles. Well, you were right about the shortcut, but I think they've sent a welcoming party. And here we go, it's time to face down Insidious to the quite awesome Insidious Consumer of All. It's, it's a pretty awesome track. Now we've seen Insidious before because we fought on top of one in the opening bit of the game just before the prologue. But this is the first time that we actually get to face him down. And I have to say, he is a bit challenging to read. Like, basically, you have got to dodge, essentially, roundabouts when things turn red. I mean, basically, the red is your cue to dodge. But actually pulling it off is easier said than done. He's certainly much easier to note the closing of the eyelid than anything else. Because basically, if you get caught in that, it will hurt. But that is arguably the easiest one to dodge. But 
having said all that, it's a really cool fight. And I think the fact that you are underwater kind of does make it quite cool, although it's very easy to accidentally go into Snake within, if you're kind of manically dodging. Now, one thing I'll point out, with the demon names, for the most part, like the angels have kind of positive names, positive things associated with their names, so Valor, Valiant, Glamour, Applauds, though we haven't seen any applause in this game, they were in the first one, Acceptance, Compassion, all of that. The demons have kind of negatively associated names, makes sense that they do. So, Insidious means full of wiles or plots, lying in wait or seeking to entrap or ensnare, and I think that's where they got kind of the whole devourer or consumer of all, because it's kind of entrapping, ensnaring type of thing. It's like how Gamora is based on one of the cities in the Bible that gets destroyed by God because of something or other. It's Sodom and Gomorrah, basically. So that's where they get Gomorrah from. And anyway, it's time to come do the last push. And this is going surprisingly well for me because <laughs> of when I did the first run of this battle, it, it wasn't good. <laughs> And also, the terrifying thing about these eyeballs is that they have mouths. They're not just eyes. They're kind of... Mouth, eyeball, things. And you can see it's... The thing coming... Oh, it's really creepy. But... With that... Time to hit the climax. Oh, it was cool. <laughs> Although, as per usual in Bayonetta 2, our victory doesn't last very long. Which is just depressing, really. It's like, I want to gloat in my victory, damn it. I want a repeat of the absolute decimation and humiliation of Temperantia that you see in the original game. I want something like that and just the game never gives it you. Also we get orbs for defeating demons which is quite cool. Anyway, the way to paradise. The lake surrounding the base of Fimble Venter is said to extend deep underground, so deep that no one has ever seen its bottom. There are tales that God created a city that sleeps along the lake bed and punishes any who dare approach it with eternal damnation. I thought it was probably just some story made up to scare kids, but some of the details were a little too worked out. They say the city was formed from the memories of God as he watched over the human world. It was made as a haven to keep the chosen people, plants and animals safe when the judgment day would come. Without the city, all life on the human world would simply be washed from existence with the world itself. It's obviously not the most complete convenient place to go get to, but God was of course aware of this. He made sure there was a means of transportation that could carry the Chosen Ones to his city. And people referred to it as an Ark. The Ark was put together using special earthen elements that allowed it to move through water like a submarine. If that thing really exists, I wonder if someone like me can make God's Chosen One list. As much as I like you, Luca, probably not. Considering you, you know, allied with a witch. But yes, yeah, so the whole arc thing, Noah's Ark, that's 
basically where I would say that comes from. But we're inside Insidious, and that is the name for this particular stage. And moving along here... It's time to meek what... meek? meek? There? Meet what are essentially the Mook Demons. Which are hatred and I think it's hideous. Hatred's the big fella, hideous are the small fellas. Now I have to say, I really do like the demon designs, they're really cool. But I will say they are particularly vicious. Way more so than the angels are. It's because kind of we're getting into the latter half of the game. I mean this is sort of almost the halfway point. The halfway point is technically the end of the next chapter, but Yeah, so the, the difficulty's got to start ramping up, and it does. But cool thing with the fact that the demons drop orbs is that in Devil May Cry, that is exactly what the demons did. So kind of, Iteki Kamiya, as well as doing certain things to link Bayonetta's world to that of Devil May Cry, or at least using highly similar ideas, he's used the whole demons drop orbs thing. Although obviously, it's Yusuke Hashimoto who did this game, so I don't know whose idea that quite was, but... Either way, also that is a very annoying Umbran Crow to get. Very annoying. Because you have to run up that and catch it, and it's it's difficult. And I would also like to point out that uh, you obviously saw the demon-specific verse end thing, which is where she empties the entire magazine into the thing, which is just really cool. <laughs> Also, this is Chernobog, in one of the few instances where I'm going to use it. It can be absolutely violently destructive, and it's probably uh, the best way of getting a pure platinum on that verse that I have found. Because it's such a small enclosed location that you just decimate your opponents. I can't actually remember what those little demons are called. They have a name, but I don't think it's ever actually revealed to you, which is slightly depressing. Now I will say, my god, this Muspelheim. I hate it. Because basically, you've got to, you know, you can only attack the demons when you're in witch time. But obviously, you have got to do real risk reward, and if you want to get a high score, then you essentially need to be taunting, because that is the only way that you're going to keep that combo thing going. And, yeah, it's... it's a pain. Now, I'm sure that there are people who are far better at this game who don't have quite this much struggle with this particular Muspelheim, but... It's one of the ones that I had a struggle with, definitely. Took me m more, quite a few turns to get it. <laughs> but also, fun fact, all of the torture attacks for the demons involves bringing out your Umbran infernal demons and absolutely obliterating them. It's a beautiful moment. <laughs> But I believe that pretty much you get most, if not all, of the Infernal Demons coming out in a torture attack at some point or another. And while I'm not going to show all of them off in this main story mode, it is something that I believe I am going to show off at a later point. Because... I want to show off as much of this game as I physically can. If I can show all of it, that would be glorious. Don't quite think that it's going to fully work like that. But <laughs> I'm going to do my damnedest. 
But with all that done, we actually only have one verse left in this entire chapter. This is sort of what I'm getting at with this game. <sighs> Sometimes the chapters don't feel like they last long enough. Like, I kind of feel like I want at least half an hour of verse, even when you have kind of Muspel Himes and all of that. I don't know. But either way, hello, Lumen Sage. <laughs> Indeed it is, and so we begin this rather glorious fight with the Mask Lumen. And it's certainly way more challenging than the first time. He's a lot quicker, a lot more violent. So be prepared. <laughs> now something that I want to bring up during this fight is the Enochian that the Mask Lumen uses. Because it is exactly the same language that Bayonetta uses. So that's really cool. So, I believe that it's Horn and All for Temperantia, which is basically means Leo. He also uses Zisiel, which I believe is just that one, to summon the lightning, the, well, the fire meteors. He also does, well, well I don't think that has, a, I don't know whether that has a, actual translation or not. I don't know. He also uses Lavavo, which means Prey Wherein, which materialises volcanic flames. Uh, he uses Lebanayo, which casts lightning pools. He also does Kakaom, or Kakakom, which means Flourish, which is at the final combo of a Feather Shuriken. Agi, which means no one, which is at the also at the final combo of the Feather Shuriken. I believe Isai Ho, which is Deliverer itself is Law, which materialises volcanic flames slash firebolts. Also, we just had Obeli Song there, which is Deliverer to summon Sapientia. And I believe the only other one that I've got left is Ziraka to summon Fortitudo, which is Aquarius. There are probably others that I am forgetting or can't find, but yes. Also, the summon for Hydra, which is the infernal demon that we've just summoned, is Kanalu, which means blood. Now, Hydra obviously comes from the ancient Greek Hydra, the multi-headed lizard serpent thingamajiggy that Hercules has to defeat. It's quite a cool design, I have to say. <laughs> and Hydra is apparently the spinner of destiny, and actually takes the form of a gorgon-like head. So, it's kind of mixing in all of the kind of Greek stuff for Hydra. <laughs> also, if you can get this counter, it is amazing and it's very powerful. It's very powerful to make sure to use it.
But with that, the Masked Lumen is defeated once again. And it's time for a glorious climax. And with that rather embarrassingly poor performance, it looked really cool, but it wasn't great. <laughs> Chapter 7 is complete. And we got a platinum! Oh yeah! So, with all of that, it's time to move forward to Chapter 8, which is technically so long a chapter that it's had to be split into two chapters. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But let's get on with it. Ha, 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 ha.